Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nicole Fields. I'm the Chief Executive Officer here at St. James Health, Federally Qualified Health Center. I want to start by welcoming some of our elected officials. We have Mayor, the Mayor of Newark, Raz Baraka. We have the New Jersey Senate Majority Leader, Teresa Ruiz. The Assembly Budget Chair, Eliana Pintor Marin. Um, City of Newark Councilman Mike Silva should be here in two minutes. Um, we have City of Newark Council President LaMonica MacGyver. <laughs> Councilwoman at large, Round, um, Louise Scott Roundtree. Sorry about that. <laughs> I saw Councilman Larry Crump. Oh, how are you, Councilman? I think that's everyone. Um, and then we have some key community partners here today. We have Mark Manigan, the President and Chief Executive Officer of our WJ Barnabas Health. <laughs> Daryl Ter Terry, the President and Chief Executive Officer of Newark Beth Israel. <laughs> Elizabeth McCarthy, the President of the Community Food Bank of New Jersey. Dr. Selena Hawk, the Chief Executive Officer of the New Jersey Primary Care Association. Andrea Martinez Meja, the Executive Director of the Greater Newark Healthcare Coalition. Ketlin Alsbrook, the Director of the City of Newark Department of Health and Community Wellness. Dominic Lee, the Chief Executive Officer of Brick Education Network. <laughs> Craig Maynard, United Community Corp Chief Executive Officer. And Pete Rosario, the Chief Executive Officer of La Casa de Don Pedro. If I missed a few, I promise Valpreet will get to you later. <laughs> but um, we're very excited to have you all here today. I do want to mention, last but not least, we do have a few of the St. James Health Board members here today including our new board chair, James Gonzalez, who stepped into the position last week. <laughs> After our four founding board chair, who served since the beginning, passed away. Um, the work we have done in the past seven years could not have been done without him, and he will be missed by all and remembered through our service to the, to the community. On a brighter note, next week is seven years to the day that this team of supporters that are here right now stood in this waiting room, cutting the ribbon on St. James Health's first site. That year, St. James Health saw just under 1,000 patient encounters. And in 2023, St. James Health had over 17,000 patient encounters. The reason for this is need and collaboration. We're back here today where it all started because once we opened and we filled a gap for healthcare, we noticed there were a lot of other needs out there. Today's ribbon cutting is to celebrate the 340B discount pharmacy here on the second floor and a food pharmacy located on the fifth floor. The collaborative eff effort between RWJ Barnabas Health and St. James Health FQHC will allow patients to access discounted prescriptions, free healthy food, visits with a dietitian, and culturally relevant healthy recipes. We will focus on chronic diseases, social determinants, and everyday needs of our community. A thriving community's foundation lies in the health and well-being of its residents. Over the coming months, you're gonna see this team a lot because we have big plans to deliver healthcare in a collaborative way that improves the health of the patients and their day-to-day -day wellness. We want there to be a noticeable impact on the access to healthcare, prescriptions, healthy food, and truly create a healthier Newark. Now I'm gonna to introduce to you Daryl Terry, the President and Chief Executive Officer of Newark Beth Israel Medical Center. Thank you, Nicole. Um, I'm going to uh, 
say all the names that Nicole said all over again, <laughs> if that's all right with you guys. <laughs> uh, no, I just want to welcome all of our dignitaries and elected officials. Uh, I didn't realize it was going to be all of this. I had uh, a very fun speech uh, in order, but now I need to make it a little bit more serious. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that I want to talk about is the collaboration between uh, St. James and RWJ Barnabas Health, particularly Newark Beth Israel Medical Center. So under Valpreet's leadership, we have a program called Our Healthy Newark. Our Healthy Newark places uh, community health workers in our emergency department, and so every patient gets a uh, social determinant of health screening. And if, they're, if, they tr if that triggers a visit by a community health worker, that community health worker connects people to uh, primary care physicians. It also connects them to other resources, whether it's social service type activities, legal activities. We, we help them with whatever they need. This community health uh, worker program, part of a program called Our Healthy Newark, is transformative at Newark Beth Israel. In addition to that, we have a transportation hub that started out of the Our Healthy Newark initiative that has provided over 25,000 rides for our patients since its inception in August. So I say all of this to say not to take away from what we're doing here today is to supplement it. So our partnership has also produced, so when we started 10 years ago, we had at Newark Beth Israel, we had a garden. It's called the Beth Garden. It was. Uh, we had it in a vacant lot, and we grew some fresh fruits and vegetables. We had a farmer's market, and then it actually expanded. It grew into what's called the greenhouse, the Beth Greenhouse. So we're one of the few hospitals in the United States that has a whole greenhouse. So uh, what we're doing is really uh, coordinated and uh, in conjunction with uh, St. James, because we do believe that uh, healthy food is truly the right prescription for our Newark residents. That, uh, that will likely be able to, people will be able to get off of medications and have healthier, better lives if they eat right. And so we wanna make sure that we're partnering with our uh, community partners to address all the needs of the Newark community. And so we're really thankful to be here today. I want to acknowledge my uh, RWJ Barnabas Health colleagues, and I'm not sure whether I'm introducing the next speaker or are you coming back up? Okay, all right. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I have a feeling the next speaker is going to have to make his speech more serious, too. Um, we have Mark Madigan, the President and Chief Executive Officer of RWJ Barnabas Health, who is the mastermind behind this plan to make this collaborative effort here. I think we should just call the press conference that mastermind and move on from here. Now, that's awfully gracious of you to say, Nicole. Uh, I can't tell you how proud I am to be here today on behalf of my 38,000 colleagues, a handful of whom are here today, uh, to celebrate the ribbon cutting on this terrific expansion of uh, Our Healthy Newark, which is a robust partnership between RWJ Barnabas Health, St. James Health, now the Community Food Bank, uh, our sponsors uh, in municipal government and state government, and really I think the best of what it's about when it comes to taking care of the most vulnerable among us. And you know, I think you can judge a society about how a society takes care of the most vulnerable among us. And I think Mayor Baraka has been progressive and aggressive in pointing out uh, Western civilizations and some of the failings that we have in this country in connection with taking care of the, of the most vulnerable. And, but we're all coming together to, to do our part, and I'm really proud to be part of all that. Um, you know, at RWJ Barnabas Health, uh, we have realized a long time ago that, um, you know, 80% of one's health is determined uh, by the social determinants of health, right? Uh, do you have a good job? Do you have a good place to live? Do you have access to food, let alone healthy food, uh, and the like? Uh, so we've been very focused on those things, and that's why we've developed our anchor mission program, which is where we hire local and buy local in the communities where we reside, and we have the incredible Newark Beth Israel Medical Center here in Newark. 
Uh, we support homes for the homeless. We were at a ribbon cutting just a couple weeks ago uh, following uh, Mayor Baraka's leadership on the expansion of Hope Village. Uh, we participated in that. Uh, our Healthy Newark, where we're participating in expanding community-based health, providing more care in the community, as my colleague Daryl talked about, connecting the, the services, health, social, food, and, and the like, to the people where they are. Uh, and, and, and surrounding them, providing transportation uh, so that we get them before they get sick, right? And that's the name, that's the name of the game. Uh, and I'll tell you, in terms of food, uh, as we're here today to celebrate a food pharmacy, uh, Daryl mentioned a greenhouse, right? We built that. That, that greenhouse produces 5,000 pounds of fresh produce annually. We've distributed 40,000 pounds of fresh farm food through our common market food uh, farm box program, 29,000 farm fresh meals to school children, 130,000 pounds of food, and 290,000 diapers uh, to our Newark Beth Israel Medical Center's women's pantry to pe pregnant women and their families. We're funding community gardens. We provided 1,000 uh, earth boxes to create gardens in schools. We're hosting farmers markets with produce from our own greenhouse and items from local and urban and rural farmers and connecting them to this community. And we've embedded nutritional programs uh, throughout the state and the city. Um, I just want to thank our partners in government. Uh, the Our Healthy Newark uh, uh, project was born by virtue of a state grant. Uh, and we have with us today two of the sponsors of that state grant, Majority Leader Senator Teresa Ruiz, Madam Chair Eliana Pinto Marin, Chair of the State Assembly Budget Committee. Without their leadership, we wouldn't be sitting here today. We wouldn't be doing all the good that we're doing. So thank you. I want to thank Mayor Barack. I want to thank our partners on the City Council. Uh, it, is, it is all of us coming together to do some good here. Um, I just want to close by saying a few things. I remember, I, I was here, I think, that you opened seven years ago, Nicole? I think I met you nine years ago, or maybe eight and a half years ago, when this really aggressive, smart, young executive came into my office when I was practicing law and said, I want to build an FQHC in Newark. I'm going to make this really big. You know, it's going to be great. We're going to help a lot of people. And I had a lot of experience in doing this kind of thing. I said, Nicole, this is hard, very complex, you know, lots of government, but you've got to get a board going and the whole thing. And she said, Mark, I got it. Seven years later, look what this woman, through sheer personal perseverance and determination, has created with a terrific board supporting her, an incredible support network, community health support network for the city. So, so uh, thank you, Nicole. And like Nicole and St. James Health and the Community Food Network and our friends in government, RWJ Barnabas Health is deeply committed to Newark. We love Newark, we love the folks who live here. We are in and of this city. We live here, we work here, we hire here, we buy here. We've been here for 130 years and we'll be here for the next 130 years. And this project, the food pharmacy, the retail pharmacy that will enable uh, our patients and the folks we serve to get their medicines at a discounted price. Um, this project is a reflection of that love and commitment and I so thankful to be a part of it and thank you all so much. Thank you, Mark. Our next two speakers have supported St. James and this partnership since day one. Um, we have New Jersey Senate Majority Leader Teresa Ruiz coming up. <laughs> oh, you guys could come, you guys want to come up together? Uh, to the east border. You, you guys can come it's up together. Good. It's all good. Good afternoon, everyone, mayor, uh, council colleagues, and uh, to the community. A great example of a coalition of consciousness that's that's gathered here today. One entity in and of itself cannot accomplish what greater gains are. You have the nonprofit, you have government, you have all different se sectors culminating really just to create healthier practices. When we first opened this space, obviously there was a need. When you live in the city of Newark, you realize that oftentimes when you're making your appointments for your family members or for yourself, the zip code where your appointment is is not going to be in a neighborhood location. FQHCs begin to build that bridge to be sure that regardless as to accessibility to, 
to to you know transportation that there are avenues for you to seek appropriate care and then to see this place bloom in ways unfortunately during the pandemic where I have to tell you, St. James stepped into a, a, a space where so many of us were unaware of what was happening and together with the mayor's vision really just created a pathway that made me feel more comfortable as a mother, as an elected official, and as a, a, an advocate for health. So thank you for all of that work that you've done. Today to the Barnabas Healthcare System, who has consistently demonstrated themselves to be a partner both at the Beth, but for us in the North Ward at Clara, which is not physically located in the city, but we do know that so many of our family members do gain to get access care. And what is it that we're trying to accomplish here today? You get diagnosed, you get your prescription. There is no excuse not to take your meds or to get better. Uh, the assemblywoman and I were talking about that, and I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. How often I have left a medical appointment with the prescription. And if I'm not in dire pain, maybe it takes me four or five days to fill the prescription. And so if someone who is keenly aware of what I should be doing still doesn't have the best practices, really just developing that strategy here in a way that's right at your fingertips and that's affordable. And of course, as a vegetarian, how much better than to have a farm a C at your fingertips when we know that anyone who's done the SNAP benefit challenge, if you haven't, I would ask you to do it. I was eating peanut butter and lentils for a very long time with Wonder Bread, which doesn't fill you up at all, I will tell you. Um, to be able to stretch your your dollar and to get accessibility to fresh fruits oftentimes in the space what we see mothers in particularly is doing a lot of shopping at a local bodega which doesn't have the the best of of you know ingredients on the shelves just because of you know time and and what can you can gather so accessibility to fresh food, making sure that there's access to health care, affordability and medicines. This is a one stop shop to make sure that Newark residents can thrive. So congratulations and thank you for everyone being a partner. And now we'll bring up our East Ward local, the Assembly Budget Chair, Eliana Pintor Marin. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, so this must be really important, Nicole, because to have the mayor, Daryl, Mark, everyone here um, is uh, is really interesting. Um, you know, Nicole, I give you all the props because you started the F FQHC um, in the East Ward. There's always this kind of um, assumption that the East Ward, right, um, because we have all the great restaurants, we have, it's lively, that we don't need certain things. Um, and I think that Nicole had the courage to say that the East Ward really was being uh, underrepresented when it came to health. In, and it shows that no matter what your, your, your bank account looks like, no matter the color of your skin, no matter if you live in housing, no matter if you own a three, a, a three family home, this place here is always ready to serve you, no matter what your zip code is, and no matter what it says in your, in your bank. And I appreciate that. Um, Daryl, when it comes to you and the Newark Beth, um, it's, it's, it's an understatement of what's going on there. Um, and you partnering with Nicole is really something that when St. James closed the hospital, there was really two hospitals that people went to, um, and that's the Newark Beth and it was Clara, as Senator Ruiz said. Um, and that was a big loss for us in the East Ward. And as you know, with the traffic, it could take you about 20 to 30 minutes to get across town. Um, so, Nicole, your primary existence here and the things that you do and making sure that their primary health is taken care of and partnering with the local hospitals to make sure that the specialties are now in place. And the Community Food Bank, did we all, if people didn't know about the Community Food Bank before the pandemic, they do now. Um, and the increase uh, uh, that you really are seeing still with families today. So today is a, a day of celebration. Nicole, I know when you first opened up, I was going to have my daughter um, that's, that's seven years old. Then we did the, the real uh, ribbon cutting when you were open and that was a year later and she participated. She was a little bored, she fell asleep. Um, but this is like a true essence that this has been your baby essentially and that you've seen it grow and you've expanded. So congratulations to you, congratulations to Mark. They say, Mark, you're the mastermind. Not really sure if that's true or not. Um, I think you're just really lucky in having great people that work Amen. with you. Um, so congratulations to, to you, Mark, and the Barnabas team on everything that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblywoman. Um, the next speaker does not need an introduction. It is our Mayor, Raz Baraka. 
Thank you, thank you. First, obviously, I want to thank our state legislators. Obviously, this doesn't happen without uh, their commitment to the city of Newark. And I like the ring, Madam Pintor Marin, President, whatever you said, that sounded great. <laughs> And, uh, you know, our, our senator here, uh, you know, the Senate Majority Leader, we uh, appreciate you for the work that you do here for our city. That's number one. I uh, want to thank Nicole, who is awesome. Uh, that's the best way to describe her. Um, you know, she has been with us, you know, in very, very difficult times uh, and helped us get through those times. And I like the fact that the coalitions that came together during crisis are still together uh, and learning how to take something that we had to do and make it something that we must do. And um, it, it's important. Glad to see the Community Food Bank of New Jersey still in it, still at it. Helped us pass out a lot of food during COVID, still trying to figure out how to get food to residents here in the city of Newark. We deeply appreciate that. Uh, that's for sure. The idea of having a, a retail pharmacy and food upstairs is just phenomenal. So St. Barnabas, hats off to you. Met with the St. Barnabas team last week to talk about some of the social determinants uh, of health that exist in the city of Newark, just the zip code determinism or the, the, the fact that people lose years off of their life based on the zip codes that they live under is, was tremendous to me just to, to, to look at and, and, and listen to, uh, you know, just eight miles, you lose 14 years of your life is this outrageous to me uh, around things that actually can be addressed and fixed. So we can actually help people live longer lives by getting them access to food, because food is medicine, uh, and giving people access to, to primary care physicians, giving people access to housing, giving people access uh, to a healthy environment will actually add years to their life. And I don't know if people look at it that way. When I saw it on paper, I'm like, wow. Uh, you, you know this anecdotally, but to see the data that kind of suggests that we're actually uh, making people die earlier uh, by forcing them to live in certain zip codes without the resources means that we have a lot of work to do and a great responsibility on our shoulders. So I want to thank St. Barnabas, St. James, Community Food Bank, uh, the council, our legislative leaders down at the state, all of the folks that, that made this happen here today is incredibly important. And I know families who get to come here uh, for primary care physicians, because that's number one, uh, because most of us use the hospital as primary care physicians. Uh, which drives costs up at the hospital and creates another problem. But because they could come here for primary care, number one. Number two, they could come get their medicine here as well the same day, and they can go upstairs and get some food. That's a trifecta, uh, and uh, it is incredible. Uh, thank you, Nicole, for all the great work you're doing. Got to shout Ketlin out in the back, you know, uh, my health director back there who does an awesome job. Glad to see you here and working with uh, St. James as well. So thank you all. Thank you, Mayor. Um, our next speaker is somebody that Valpreet and I drag down a rabbit hole every day. Valpreet and I are constantly texting through our expansion, and we need some help as we find places to move, places to expand. And this person is constantly hearing from us on a daily basis. He calls himself our real estate agent, Councilman Mike Silver, <laughs> our free real estate agent. A good afternoon, everybody. Um, I just started this position 19 months ago, and the list uh, is too long uh, to say what Nicole and St. James Health has done for this community. But I can tell you that in 19 months, one thing I learned about this young lady is that community first. She loves this city. She loves its residents. During COVID, before COVID, after COVID, again, the work she's done here in the East Ward and throughout the city is too long to list. Uh, from the mayor to my council colleagues here today, uh, I'm so grateful to have her in the East Ward, but I know she's expanding the entire city, uh, and I'm getting a little jealous, but uh, I'm going to find her that spot uh, along with Valpreet. We're going to work hard to make sure that uh, I'm a good real estate agent, and I find them a location to serve the people of this entire city of Newark. Uh, it's a great day for us. Again, I can never be thankful uh, to her for what she's done. Uh, it's not only uh, St. James Health, it's what she's done. We gave out a thousand turkeys for Christmas. We're always partnering uh, with things, but one thing I can always say, like I said from the beginning, community first, Newark residents first. So thank you, Nicole, once again. 
Thank you, Councilman. One thing I've learned over the years is that we really have to stay in our lane. St. James does health care well. We don't do food. So we really needed the partner to bring the food into St. James, and that's where the Community Food Bank came in. So our next speaker is Elizabeth McCarthy, the president of the Community Food Bank of New Jersey. Thank you, everyone. It is so exciting to be here today. Um, I particularly want to thank our state officials, because when I tell food banks around the country what New Jersey does to keep food insecurity at the top of the list of priorities, they are just amazed. It really is unprecedented. Um, from the governor and the speaker to our senators and assembly people, it really is exceptional that the state has put this much effort into solving food insecurity. Um, we distribute over 100 million pounds of food a year in New Jersey. It's an incredible amount of food. Um, but a huge part of our mission really would be to, to lessen that amount, to shorten the line at pantries. And one way to do that is through healthy food. Um, so about 35 million pounds of what we distributed was produce, um, really trying to get to people who have diabetes, who have hypertension. We know they're sort of overrepresented in a lot of the communities in which we work and live. Um, and so really trying, I got a sneak preview of the refrigerators upstairs. The produce is beautiful. I was very proud to be that partner. But um, we really believe that helping people live more productive, active lives will shorten that line, will make fewer people food insecure. Um, so thrilled, we hope to have this be a model for other partners partnerships that we will develop throughout the state um, and just really appreciate being part of this great initiative. Thank you. And then last but certainly not least is Valpreet Grewal Virak from uh, um, RWJ Barnabas Health. I'm sorry, Valpreet. As if I don't speak to her all day, every day, <laughs> my mind just goes well completely blank. I know. She, she basically <laughs> works for St. James Health, but. Thanks so much. Uh, well, I'm going to close it out. This I'm the last speaker. I just want to obviously have a few uh, few thank yous that I have to get out there, starting with Nicole Fields. I met Nicole a little over a year ago. Uh, you've been an incredible partner, honestly, and, and it's true. We're on the phone every single day texting, speaking with each other, and we're definitely not 9 to 5 people. Healthcare is not 9 to 5, and I'll tell you, we get stuff done overnight if we have to, and I think it's been great to be partnering with St. James Health. Uh, I have to, of course, um, thank Raul and Marcus and Dr. Z. She has a tremendous staff and all the clinicians here that do an, a fabulous job of taking care of the patients. And I also have to thank our leadership, uh, Mark Madigan, who's hiding in the back right now. Uh, He's an incredible leader. He makes things easy for us, honestly, because he ha he's a great visionary. But what he's talking about today is not only for the public front, it's not only to tell you how great we are and what we're doing today. He mentions that internally in our, in our larger corporate meetings. He'll do it on, on a one-on-one -on -one basis as well. Vulnerable communities are always at the forefront of his mind, and it's really important to have a leader like that, and it really encourages individuals like myself to keep going in communities like Newark. So thank you to Mark Manigan. Uh, Daryl Terry, he lent me his, his leadership team right out of the gate. Thank you so much. We've done so much great work at Newark Beth Israel. You have a lot of folks here from there today, and I can't thank you enough for doing that for me. I got a great jump start because of your leadership at Newark Beth Israel. Mayor Roz Baraka, thank you so much for everything. Uh, and we're constantly in his office letting him know what we're doing in his great city, the largest city, by the way, in the state of New Jersey. And uh, he always ends with this, which I love. He always says, what can I do to help you? And that means a lot to me. Him just saying that means a lot to me, and I know his heart's in it. So thank you for letting us operate and do so much good work in your, in your city. Senator Teresa Ruiz and Assemblywoman Marin, I just met with you recently as well. I've known you for uh, a long time publicly, obviously. Uh, it's important to have your voice always, not just with us and in the four walls of our meetings, but I constantly hear what you say for the people of not just Newark, not just Essex County, but of the state of New Jersey and Trenton. So thank you for everything you do, especially fighting for women and for children. I uh, appreciate all your help. I have to thank my team and my colleagues really quick. Uh, it, it takes a village to get things done and all of these initiatives that we have come forth in this uh, great ribbon cutting ceremony. I'll start with George Helmy, Chris James, Barbara Mintz, Molly, Daniel, Maruf, Anthony, Michaela, Sonia, Rebecca, Carrie, Diana, and Margie Heller, and from Newark Beth, especially Laura, Atia, Linda, Kim Cook. Um, I have to also say thank you to the St. James board member that is here, Doug Bell is in the room. Uh, for the 340B staff, we have quite a few people from them that are making this operational, so thank you to all of them. Thank you to the New Jersey Primary Care Associ Association, rather. Uh, their CEO, Selena Hawk, is here. Thank you, Craig Manor, uh, the Executive Director of United Community Corporation. 
Emilio Panasaki, I'm probably saying your last name wrong, Emilio, but uh, the co-founder and executive director of Urban Agriculture Cooperative, thank you for being such a great help to us in supplying uh, fresh produce alongside, of course, Community Food Bank of New Jersey. It's been a great partnership, and I think we have more to come. Thank you to Caitlin Guinness from Senator Booker's office. Uh, she's here as well. Thank you uh, to the Senator's office. Of course, this is a huge initiative for him for the state of New Jersey, especially because he sits on agriculture today. So he's really proud uh, of this initiative, just couldn't be here today, hopefully, for the next one. And finally, thank you to the Southward Children's Alliance for being here this afternoon. Again, appreciate everyone's presence. Thank you for your support. I see many of you, uh, Councilman Roundtree, here and in other venues as well. You're always supportive of RWJ Barnabas Health, and I'm pretty sure we can do many more of these initiatives in the future. Again, thank you for coming. Really appreciate everyone being here, and let's keep doing things like this. This is not over yet. Thank you. Uh, we're actually going to do the lip ribbon cutting ceremony right here, so I'd like to call up all the speakers. I know it's a tight spot, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to set up right here, followed by small tours of the food pantry. We'll take you up uh, in small groups, starting with the speakers who are going to do the ribbon cutting. Thank you again, everyone, and elected officials as well. Thank you.